alive. My dad never got too excited about the gifts the way some people do, and it drove my mom absolutely crazy because she would always try to find just the perfect gift that would get my dad excited. For Father's Day one year, she decided to get him a one-of-a-kind custom-designed tie. Now, she knew my dad had two great passions in his life, his career on the Indianapolis Fire Department, and he loved telling really bad, corny puns. And so she hired a well-known graphic designer to create a beautiful tie for him. It was reversible, and on one side had that, that text mashup of all of his favorite puns, about 50 of his favorite puns. And then on the reverse side had pictures of all the different fire apparatus and fire stations that he stayed at and worked at on the fire department. She presented the box to him and looked at him with bright, expectant eyes as he opened it. And he took in all the details, turning it over and looking at both sides. And finally, my mom said, well, which side do you like better? And my dad's response was absolutely perfect. He said, it's a tie. <laughs> and with that, a happy Father's Day to all of you dads out there. I'm not much of a green thumb, but I do like really nice landscaping. I like a really nice looking yard. Now, the people who put the landscaping at my house told me that it would not take much to maintain it. But over the last two days, I spent a lot of time pulling weeds from the landscaping. It takes a lot to nurture, to care for, to work, to have good landscaping, a good garden, a good yard, a good vegetable garden, flower garden, whatever. It takes a lot of work to do that. And sometimes, for reasons beyond our control, something happens to damage it. A storm, a drought, a flood, or even the animals that live nearby. And so it may not be surprising that Jesus uses that image of planting and harvesting so often in our Gospels. Because in planting and harvesting, we find ourselves working hand in hand with God. We find ourselves becoming really co-creators, co-fashioners, co-workers with our God. Jesus uses just such an image in today's Gospel when he talks about the kingdom of God. He says it's like a mustard seed that's very small when planted but grows into a large tree. And he reminds us that we don't always know how a plant grows. We only know that if we plant it and water it, nurture it and care for it, we know that it'll grow. And so it is, Jesus says, with the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God can grow. It can grow right here, right now, in southern Indiana. The kingdom of God can grow right here, right now, in the town of Sellersburg. The kingdom of God can grow right here, right now, in JP2 Parish. And the kingdom of God can grow right here, right now, in your own homes and in your own families. But it takes us and God working together. We are co-creators, co-fashioners, co-workers with God. One of my favorite stories is of a woman who's out working in her flower garden and a man walks up to her and says, my, that's a beautiful garden God put here. And the woman says, oh yeah, you should have seen it when God had it by himself. <laughs> and she's right. We work with God. We work with God to build up God's kingdom. Our readings today remind us though that we don't always have to think of that in grandiose terms. It's not that we have to build the biggest or even the best part of God's kingdom. We simply have to do our little part and allow God to take care of the rest. Ezekiel said as much in our first reading today, a tender shoot will be planted to become a majestic cedar. The Lord brings the low high and brings the high low. The mustard seed is small, but God transforms it to make it large. Now, if God does that, for the plants and the trees and shrubs, how much more will God do the same for us? If we give only a little bit of ourselves, a little bit of our time, a little bit of our talent, a little bit of our treasure, God can take that little bit to help build up his kingdom. You know, I firmly believe that one of the reasons so many people do nothing to help their fellow human being is that they see so much need and they think the little bit that I can do can't possibly make a difference. But I was reminded of all this and how untrue that is 
on our recent pilgrimage to France while visiting Lisieux. Lisieux is the home of St. Therese of the Little Flower, who lived her life pursuing what she called the little way, just doing little things that made a difference in the life of others. Our readings today remind us that we don't need to worry about how little we can do. We do what we can, but it's God who takes our little bit that we can do and transforms it into something great. But we have to do our part. We have to do our part. If we don't plant seeds of kindness, God's love won't grow in us. If we don't plant seeds of awe and amazement at creation, God's hope won't grow in us. If we don't plant seeds of trust in each other, God's faith won't grow in us. We certainly need God, but God designed a world that needs us. Together we fashion, together we work, together we create. Together, God with us and us with God, together we build God's kingdom.